crafters Raquel here with paints and glitter I welcome you to this tutorial today I'm sharing with you the truck and track Christmas die set from tonic studios and of course we are celebrating the birthday month for tonic studios and of course this comes with some amazing releases that you're not going to want to miss all week long whether it be through create and craft or the direct channels from tonic studios and of course the entire design team is participating with different makes so today i'm going to walk you through what's in this die set and this tutorial will be a two-part tutorial however it's all in one video so the first part is going to be on how to assemble the actual little train and two different styles of boxes that you can make for it and then the second part will be the truck so depending on where you want to begin you can go ahead and skip through the video however you need to but I wanted to share with you that this is an amazing set and it is a 3d make however this like any of the other dies from Tonic Studios, you can use it as you wish. Now, I did want to share with you that this has a lot of pieces, 106 to be exact, and it does come with this wonderful magnet sheet so that you can put it away. The different pieces here are going to allow you to decorate this, but it does have some foundation pieces. So I'll walk you along through which pieces you'll need for each make. And I did want to mention that it does have some little sentiments. It says warm wishes, holiday magic, festive cheer, joyful wishes, ho, ho, ho. It has all of the little numbers for the advent calendar if you wish to do that sort of little make. And then it also has happy holidays. And on the other side here, it does have the Merry Christmas. I like my traditional Christmas, so that's what I tend to go for every time. And it does have little windows or doors here that you'll be able to make. So if you remember last year's advent calendar houses that I made, um, and that's of course in my playlist if you want to take a peek at that, then this will look familiar to you and the door style is the same but this time we have some little snowflakes candy canes stars a little bow and a wreath which you can decorate whichever way you like and it is just so so adorable so with no further ado let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial for this tutorial we're going to begin creating the train and for that I'm going to point out the pieces that you're going to need and how many to cut for this main panel here it's the one with this Eve you're going to be cutting one piece you're then going to be cutting two side panels and for that you need this long rectangle here so it's got one score line there in the center so cut two of those you'll be using for the engine cover two pieces that look like this so it'll be this die here and then of course you can decorate it and I'll show you how you're also going to need a base top panel for that you're going to use this die here so cut this out twice for the train one will be the top the other will be the bottom then for the actual case you're going to be cutting this piece here six times and that's if you're going to create the type of train that has the little advent calendar added to it or the little drawers so you cut that out six times then you can also cut out for the roof of your train this piece here you can cut this out once just this outer panel and then of course cut out the pieces to decorate whether you want to do this scalloped one or this here that looks like little bricks almost then you can of course create the little chimney for that you're going to be using this piece here cut it out twice and then cut out two little hexagons and then you're going to need the front panel to your train for that you'll be using this piece here and of course you can cut into it using this verso die to create that pretty little front to your train then cut this two more times for a total of three panels so let's get started here I've cut my front piece and this is the main panel and what I've done is also take some of the acetate that comes in packaging and I've cut it down to fit behind the little windows of course that is completely optional but I've also taken the little cabin door and that's just one piece it's a little rectangle and here I've applied 
red line adhesive behind the windows. I'm going to remove the backing, then apply the acetate. Okay, so I've removed the backing to all of that red line adhesive, and I'm simply going to take the little pieces of acetate now that I had pre-measured and just place them right on top. And then here I did take a crocodile and cut this the little corners to round them. And I just did that because of that angle that's on that paper. I didn't want this to be uh, jutting out of the corners. So you do have a little window there before you press down that acetate. Okay, no pun intended. So now this can go here. Once you have that, if you want to place that on there, of course you could do vellum instead if you'd like. You can now adhere the sides. So I'm going to start with the bottom here first. You now have, have something that looks like this, and this is where this little rectangle comes in to close the back. To apply pressure, you can always use your paper creaser. Make sure that your paper is making full contact. I like to use the flat edge and just burnish that. Now you have something that looks like this and you can certainly decorate the sides. You're going to note this die collection here. So it is this little rectangle with the solid one. I've cut out the glitter card you see here. Then I've used the center portion coupled with that large rectangle and with that I cut this beautiful brown color card and lastly there's the little ticket and with that I've used this pearlescent card. I like to leave this underneath a heavy acrylic block but before I do that I'm going to just go ahead and center this piece. And that's because I'm adhering it onto glitter card. But this is all I'm going to do and set that aside. Here I have another one. Apply adhesive to the back. And this is going to go underneath the portion that has the two little windows. I'm going to flip that over back to this side. And apply the second one. I'm now going to take the back of this little portion and I'm going to add a magnet. This is a small craft magnet from Tonic Studios. So this is a 10 millimeter wide magnet and I'm just going to center it and apply some double sided adhesive on top. And then I'm going to cover that with a piece of card here. It is the same size, if you're wondering. I want to make sure that it reaches edge to edge. Okay, that should be good. I'm going to set my magnets aside until I need them again. I'm going to now create the little roof for this portion. For that, I've cut out in this brown card the roof portion, which has a score lined right down the middle and then two little tabs fold those away from yourself and as i had mentioned before there's also the pieces that you can use to decorate it i've used the sugar crystal glitter card the same that i did here and then i've also used a pearlescent card from tonic for this beautiful portion i'm just going to add this right on top Easier to decorate it while the paper is still flat. And of course the same goes for this if you want to do it that way.
Okay, so these two tabs are actually going to fit right behind that eave. You're also going to need adhesive on these two tabs. And this is why I bothered with the acetate. I wanted these sides to be nice and sturdy so that I could more easily apply this portion. So I highly recommend you use it. And it's just, again, the leftover carrier sheets from the die sets. It's often what I use. I'm just gonna hold this here Make sure it's making contact. And then I'm also going to press the paper onto that eave underneath, just gently. I'm not trying to push it down or anything like that because I want it to make sure that it's lined up here on the front and any adhesive is gonna dry clear. So bear that in mind. If you're using the Nouveau Deluxe adhesive that is, I'm going to set this aside to dry for a moment, but there it made contact. You can see that underneath. And then on the front, for the engine cover, you would have cut this piece out twice. And then there are the decorative portions that you can also cut out. I've used the dies included. And on the back, I placed double-sided adhesive. I also use two different types of mirror card as well as glitter card just to adhere to the back of that and that way I was able to get the two different colors for the stars and then the little bottom portion there. So I'm first going to decorate the sides and you want the stars facing up. And then the little bars facing the edge of the paper there. Then you have these little decorative portions. You may have noticed that I only decorated the three portions of one of these and not the other. There's a reason for that. And that's because these are going to overlap. So place your adhesive on the last little rectangle of one of them. And then adhere the other one right on top. And you should have a long strip now. You'll now adhere this engine cover onto the front panel and for that you have these little tabs on the side and then on the top. So it's easiest of course to do this on the top first. Lay it flat. And then adhere to that center little panel there. Then flip that around and do the same thing on the other side. What I've done for this little front panel is that I've used both of these dies. First, I cut it out using the solid die in the red card. Then I used the second die and placed it right on top. This gave me all that decorative pretty little front. I then went ahead and used this same die and cut into the emerald green mare card and I got the little strips to place inside. The rest was simply using pearlescent card. I just adhered right onto the back. And then lastly, I also used Nouveau drops for the bottom in two different colors just to add a little more shine. This, this is going to go right on top of this piece here. I'm just going to double that up. And then, of course, these tabs can adhere right to the back. The alternative, of course, is to sandwich the tabs in between the two pieces of paper. I don't truly see a difference. I'm just going to place these right behind here. 
making sure that they meet the bottom. You're going to repeat that same application to the other side. Once you've adhered both sides, this can now be adhered to the front of your little train front. So super easy, just apply adhesive here. And you want to make sure that it does match the bottom edge. And this is really important so that the little wheels then are able to fit correctly. And just make sure it's equidistant from one edge to the, the other. You can also decorate this if you like with the dies included and there's all varieties of options. I've cut out some little snowflakes and I think I'm going to use those. There are also little Christmas lights, which are adorable. You can hang those from the front. Once you have this decorated, you can turn it on its side and you have the dies that will create the little wheels. One thing to note here is that there are little lines that will etch right into your paper with the die, and those are important because those are what you're going to use to gauge the distance at which you should adhere this from the edge of your little train. You can, of course, decorate it first. Then use that line as your little guideline there for your adhesive. And then try to center this as best as possible, of course, on the front. And then do the same, the remaining pieces. Once you have them attached, you can flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. While the little wheels are drying, we can work on the little chimney that will go on the top. For the chimney, you can use the smallest little die here along with the little hexagon, cut two of each. And you can see here I've already folded the little score lines, so do the same with the second one. Fold everything away from you. And then fold away the little side tabs as well. Create one long piece by joining both. Now you can fold this over, add adhesive to the second tab and then fold that paper right over and join it right to the edge. Okay. Once those are adhered together, you can open this back up and fold down those little tabs on each end. You can now apply adhesive here and attach one little hexagon to one end. Do the same on the opposite side. You can now attach this to your little engine. Just place some adhesive onto one of those little hexagons and then try to center this right on top. And that completes our little engine. It's absolutely fabulous. And of course, you can keep decorating it as much as you like. I'm now going to share with you how to make the little carriages. 
for one of the carriages, what you can do is cut the top and bottom using this rectangle here. You can see it here. Go ahead and fold and burnish all of the tabs. Then for the second piece, you'll be cutting it out twice using this long rectangle. And then on one of them, you're going to notice this die here. You're going to place it right on top of that longer portion of that rectangle and then run this through your die cutting machine. Use your low tack tape to adhere this and then run that through. It's going to give you all of those little windows there or little openings. You can of course decorate them as you wish. I've cut out the little portion that does cut out the little stars from the paper and then on the background with the solid pieces I cut out the little glitter card. So I'm going to actually decorate these first while the paper is still flat. Now one little tip that I'll give you is if you're giving this away as a gift that a child will be opening once a day, then I highly advise you take a piece of tissue paper, just that thin tissue paper you add to gift baskets, and then adhere a panel right behind here. So that way the little gift inside will not be visible, little candies or anything won't fall out, and then the little door can be opened without disturbing any of the other ones. The other thing that you can do now is that you're going to have a piece that looks like this that you would have cut out six times. Go ahead and fold all of the center portions of this paper away from you so they're all mountain folds, including the tab. Adhere the little tab here end to end. And here what you'll do is that you're going to valley fold all of the little tabs on the edge, both sides. You'll now have something that looks like this. And this is where the little candies will fit. You'll do this for a total of six times and they will fit right around the openings. So here you have to be mindful, of course, of your placement. Make sure that you apply adhesive only where you need it. You may want to apply it to the base. It's easier. And make sure you don't put too much adhesive here. Then you can aim your paper, and I'm going to have to lean over to see this, but I'm going to try to make sure that this is really nice and square all the way around. Once you have it secured, make sure you do press down on that and burnish it really well. Okay. You now have something that looks like this from the outside. You, can, you can't really see it, but then once that's opened, you have your little channel there. So you're going to repeat that with all of the other ones. So I'm going to adhere them and I'll be right back. Okay, once you have all of these adhered to the back, that's what you get is a little cube there almost. So you can flip this over if you'd like to. And then at this point, you can decide if you want the little openings to face to the right or the left, then go ahead and adhere your little numbers if you'd like to, or you can wait to the end to do that, of course. Now here, this portion, you're going to flip over, and I'm, because I'm left-handed, well, I'm going to keep it as such. I'm going to take the second rectangle here, and that little tab that you folded there, Go ahead and apply adhesive to it. And I think I am going to flip this over just so that I can see it better. And I'm going to adhere this end to end here. Make sure you line it up really nicely and then fold over that tab. And then apply pressure there. And of course you could have done that first if you wanted to. 
Just create that long strip first. It's whatever you're comfortable with. These are just suggestions, of course. Okay, I'm going to make sure that this is nice and straight here. I think I'm happy with that. Okay, so now that that's adhered fully, this is going to encase all of these. I think that I first want to make sure that this reaches all the way there and everything, but go ahead and apply your adhesive to every single one of the tabs here. You don't need a lot, but just make sure that you do apply adhesive to all of them. This is now going to close right on top. You just apply pressure there. Just make sure that you are, you are checking, however, the alignment of your little boxes, that they're not askew. One great way to do that is to use your paper creaser and make sure that it fits between all of them. And then lastly, of course, you're going to flip it over and apply pressure with the same paper creaser. You're going to be using your narrow end. It's another way to make sure that these are nice and aligned. And I know you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm just taking this and applying pressure to that paper the same way I had done before. Making sure that the angles are nice and straight. Okay, so this should now look something like this. Once you've applied pressure to all of those tabs, if you can see, they're almost even all the way through. And now, of course, you're going to close this. So just apply adhesive to that long tab. And this should fit perfectly right along that edge. Maybe find a thinner paper creaser if you need to. Just to apply pressure there. Try to make sure that I don't accidentally open it. There we go. All right, perfect. You can now apply adhesive to one of the short sides of this larger rectangle and feed it right inside. Make sure it makes full contact there. And just hold on to that for a moment. Make sure that you're pushing that paper right to the edge there. This is going to be the easier way to go about this to make sure that it's nice and even. And just wait for that to dry before you continue adhering the other three edges. I've now opened this and I'm applying some pressure using that paper creaser again, making sure to burnish this really nicely. And I have that really good edge there. And now I can feel a bit more confident applying adhesive to the rest of this to close it off. Making sure you extend that adhesive if you need to, so you don't get any adhesive seeping out of the edges. Okay, and now just very gingerly feed that right back in. And then apply gentle pressure to the edges. And you'll do the same process for the other end. Once your top and bottom are applied, you can go ahead and turn this over and start adhering the little wheels. And then in this case, you just want to make sure you apply one in the center. And I'm trying to gauge it again with the little lines. Now, I only adhere the center of these little layers on purpose. So that way I could lift my paper and see where the little notches are. And then press that. I've got adhesive on these already. Gauge it by that little line. And then one on this end. OK, 
Okay, once you're happy with the one side, flip it over and repeat on the other. Now to make sure that both of my little train pieces here can come together on a table, I'm going to take that first portion, the little engine, and I'm going to apply the second magnet right on top. I'm now going to apply some adhesive. I'm going to stand this up. And the same way that I would line them up on a table, I'm using actually the grid here, but on, on my table, but I'm just going to push these two together, make sure that they're lined up really nicely and that these lines here are not overlapping. So just press them together. Okay, you now have a little dot here of adhesive. That's your indicator as to where to place your magnet. So make sure that that matches now, just like so. You can cover it up with a second piece of adhesive if you like, or just cover it up with a decorative piece of paper as I'm doing here. This is the same size rectangle. I just cut it in a different color and adding a little bit of this green. And then there is this decorative die that you can place on top if you'd like to. These will now join together quite easily. And of course, you can switch this up and create a different style. To finish so let's... this off, of course, you can decorate the top as you see here. I've gone ahead and taken also the little stars that fell out of this portion here. I had cut out again using the glitter card and I just layered them. And then there is this portion here. They are cut with this die here. So you can use the longest one to adhere to the little wheel bottoms. You can try to center it as best you can. Of course, you could plan out the placement of the little wheels if you'd like to, to make sure that these are very centered. I didn't do that. <laughs> So I'm just going to place a little bit of adhesive there and apply those to the bottom. And then I'm going to flip this over, grab another one. And I'm not decorated the back of this because I think I'm just going to have it facing in one direction. But of course you could do windows on both sides, however you like. Just hold on to that. There's also a shorter version. And it looks like this. This was meant to go on here with two little wheels. I completely forgot. So my apologies to you because there should be two of these here with this in the center. So I tried to take that off, but it would have ruined the paper. And I decided against it. But there it is. Just You have the option, of course, of making this look like it's moving up or down. Or you can just set it right dead center if you'd like. Just make sure you hold on to it if you're adhering onto glitter card. Or apply a little bit more adhesive so that it doesn't fall off. And there's that portion. I'm going to play around with this and then I'll come back at the end and show you how I decide to decorate mine. For this next little train car, we're going to create two panels that look like this. So I'm going to walk you through it. You're going to cut two rectangles using this long die. Once you've cut those, make sure that you use the layering piece along with the center piece here. You're going to line these up. I'm placing them cut side up so that they line up nicely on my table, but you'll be placing them with the cutting portion facing the paper, of course. And then lastly, here are the little windows. Okay, once you line these up, this is going to give you the perfect placement. Then remove the large two rectangles and your little windows are going to be placed right here. Take a piece of low tack tape and tack this on and run it through your die cutting machine. Do the same using this piece to cut the red layer if you'd like and then that way you'll get the piece that you can place on top and again that's using these two pieces you can also take the little windows included there is another style window and then there's another little silhouette of santa that you could use instead and you're going to couple these dies to create the little 
decorative window portions as I've done here. I'm also going to be placing a piece of acetate behind here because I want this to be nice and sturdy and I want to cover the little windows. What I've done is taken a piece of the carrier sheet that comes with the dies and I've cut it down to about three inches by four and one half inch. I'm now going to fold along the score line here. Make sure to burnish your fold lines really well. And then you can burnish the adhesive so that it sticks fully. I've used red line adhesive from Tonic Studios, which is quite strong. You can adhere the decorative layer on top. You can line this up perfectly because you use the same dies. Then carefully place the little windows inside. And they will adhere to the acetate if you're using Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive. It shouldn't be a problem. You're now going to adhere these end to end. Place one right on top of the other. I like to flip it over. And you're going to notice that this will adhere even though there's a piece of acetate there. But if you're really worried about it, you could always cut it down by a quarter of an inch. But this will now fold over and you can adhere the second tab. I've gone ahead and adhered the bottom to this little box because it won't be any different than the first one that, that we made. However, the top will be, and that's again because this is meant to be a little gift box. So what I'm going to do is apply adhesive to one of these ends, and I'm going to adhere this to the one side. Let's make sure it makes contact there and then hold that. And then make sure that this dries completely, of course. As an option to close the lid on top of this, because I only adhered one end now, then what I can do is take one of these pieces, you can cut out two using this die here, and I can open this and try to center this as best as I can with the beveled edge matching the edge of that lid. I'm gonna apply adhesive there just on that top portion, and then center this as best as possible. I'm now going to cut away the excess because it will be a little bit longer than what I need. And I'm just matching the edge of that paper, just like that. Okay. Should have something that looks like this. I can go ahead and close this again. Again, this is just an option. Feed that in. Okay, now that I know that all the sides are matching nicely, I can take a second one and this time apply adhesive on the entire bottom portion there. Line up the two little circles there and then apply the second one on the outside. And then, of course, you can tie it with a little string so that way the recipient knows to open that to receive their little gift. There's also this die here that I wanted to share with you. This is the long strip die that comes in the set. It looks like this and it has two inlay pieces. Those two dies can be used in conjunction with this long one, but I like the idea of this because it's going to provide some stability as well. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this here and I'm actually going to match it to the bottom edge of that red paper because I want to make sure that the little wheels are not competing with that too much. I'm going to apply adhesive here. I 
making sure that edge matches there. This is going to match the front now. And there's also that little tab that will wrap around. And of course, you can apply a second one. So here, I just want to make sure that I'm able to wrap it all the way around. And then I'm just going to cut away that second little tab because I won't need it. The alternative, of course, is to wrap it around as well and then hide it behind the first one. I'm just going to place it here and then work my way back. Here I'm putting the final touches on these little wheels. Again, lining them up with the little notches that are already embossed into that paper. And of course it's going to cover some of this little strip at the bottom, but you can still see the little stars. It still looks really cute. So just very carefully, I have applied that little dot of adhesive there. And I just place that right on top. Make sure to apply some pressure there. And I'm going to flip this over and take a look at the placement using the grid on my table to make sure that they're all at the same height and they look pretty good. So now I can further decorate this. And here I have the little label that says Merry Christmas. I think I'm going to put it on this side. This out, I've used mirror card and the die will emboss the word right into it or deboss. That's really cute. I'm going to just peel away the foam tape and then place this right center, like so. And of course, you can decorate this as you like. Added my little adorable candy canes and then some little snowflakes to decorate. And lastly, I'm going to add the little topper just to keep it cohesive and match the other one that we've already made. So just a little bead of adhesive there at the top. And then this can be lined up with that pretty red layer right on the edge. And I've also used the little embossing plate with the stars just to match the stars at the bottom, but there are other options that you can use. And do the other side. And again, the box can still open. This is just covering that little portion there on the edge. While these dry, we can go ahead and get started on the little truck. Okay, to create the festive truck, we're going to be using these two pieces here. And you have some options. You can use the dies included to cut into both this piece and this one if you want to cut windows into these. However, what I've done is that I've used the dies and I've cut out the doors in this darker green color. And then I've cut out the little windows as well. And I'll be layering mine on top. So I'm going to do this while the papers are still flat. It'll make it a little bit easier. These two pieces are now going to adhere by this tab here at the bottom. You can now fold all of the tabs that are remaining away from you. I'm 
and then these score lines as well. And you can burnish these if you like. And now once these are dry or this one is dry, go ahead and fold that one as well and burnish it well. Burnish the opposite side. And then you have two long tabs on each side. You now want to start assembling this. So first ad adhere this bottom portion and follow the edge of your paper. Do the same on the opposite side. Make sure you burnish that also. You're now going to fold the second line toward you. So this will be a valley fold. Now your adhesive here. So this will be at an angle. And then, of course, repeat the same on the opposite side. I'm now going to adhere the top of this little truck cabin. Yeah. Need very little adhesive to create these projects, which is wonderful because you're going to need a lot of paper. <laughs> And I only say that because if you like to add all of the little fun accessories, then you will need a lot of different colors or styles of paper at least, whether it be the pearlescent or the glitter card. It's just the contrast that makes it so much fun. Once that top is adhered, I did cut a panel that is two and three eighths by two and three quarter inches. And I am going to be adding it back here. I ran out of this color green, so I'm just using the one that I had used for my little wagon there. And you don't have to do this, but I'm doing it for a good reason, and you'll see in a minute why. So I'm going to make sure that that beautiful linen weave is facing the outside. I'm going to press this shut. I also have the little glass front, which is a piece of card that I cut out with the little rectangle in the set that has the beveled edges, and that's out of holographic card. Super cute. There's also this part here, the little grill, and you can cut that out with the die included. There are also dies in your set that will cut the little circles, the little smaller ones. It's a die that will cut out two circles at a time. And then the larger circles actually fell out of this portion here. So I just saved that and decided to use it here. So I'm going to adhere it toward the top. This will leave room for a license plate, which in this case will just be festive. Think about that. I'm going to set this aside to dry. And while that's drying, here's what I decided to do with this. Now, you do have the option of following the instructions. <laughs> if you watch my channel, you know that I don't always do that. I try to come up with my own thing sometimes, and that's what I've done here. You can cut out this piece which is going to be the base of the little bed of the truck. 
and I say bed because I am making a flatbed truck as opposed to the truck that you'll see as a sample with your instructions. So if you want to follow those, then by all means, you can make it that way. I decided I was going to make a little country truck because it makes sense for where I live <laughs> to do it this way. And I just thought it'd be a lot of fun. So I'm just folding those. And then I have cut out the two rectangle pieces that look like this. They have the score line in the center and one little tab. What I'm going to do is that I'm actually going to cut these in half. So what I've done is that I've actually cut down my paper. Now, here's how I did it. I cut this down at one and five eighths. So one of the strips is a little bit taller than the other. You can use one of them to line the inside of the other. And I'll share the reason behind that. Um, I want this to be a little bit more sturdy when it's all said and done. So you can decide to leave it as is or do it as I'm doing it. So again, this is the strip cut in half. However, I did cut it at one and five eighths. So I'm going to repeat that with the second one. I'm going to bring this down to my paper cutter. And... Okay. So take the two strips that do measure one and five eighths. And you're going to adhere these end to end with a thin tab. If you'd like, you can cut that little tab at a 45 degree angle just to make it the same as the other side. Like that. And adhere these end to end. And I apologize for any noise you may hear in the background. I have really horrible weather coming through. And I may have to stop my video because we have a tornado warning. <laughs> Hope that's not the case. <laughs> okay, so make sure you fold your score lines just as you would have to create any of the other little wagons and then adhere these end to end. You now have something that looks like this. And for the other one, you can simply cut down this piece right at the score line. Same with the other one. And you can cut it down by just a hair if you'd like to. To make sure that it fits really well. I'm just going to cut off a tiny little sliver. You can now take the base piece and this is going to feed right inside. So you can put it on whichever way you're comfortable. It doesn't really matter because it's all going to be covered anyway. But I'm just going to feed mine in here like that. And I'm not worried about getting adhesive on the inside because I'm just going to cover it up. I'm going to make sure that this is adhered fully all the way around. Once you've adhered the entire bottom there, now you can go ahead and line the inside.
Okay, so this is now going to be the bed of this truck. And what I decided to do is to make this look more like a little country truck was to take the little wooden pieces that you can cut out and add them to the sides here. I think this looks really cute. And of course, this could be adapted for the fall or the spring, because you could fill this with a bunch of flowers or put pictures of your kiddos inside, like a hayride, <laughs> if you wanted to. I think that would be super cute. And now my little truck is looking a little more country, if you will. So, of course, you can add the bit of snow that's included here to the front. I think that'll look really cute. I can now cover the bottom of this to make it a bit more festive. So I can start here and work my way around. I'm going to lift this little side a little bit and add a little more adhesive there. Then add the second one. strip and just keep wrapping this all the way around so you might feel tempted to burnish this however I recommend you not because this is such a sensitive uh, paper and I know that's probably not the right word but it can easily get dented and that's why you're able to get that beautiful debossed uh, image on there using the dies but in equal manner you can accidentally ruin it with your paper creaser. So these can now adhere together. You can, of course, place a magnet there if you'd like to, or if you really, you know, want to extend it, you can do that as well. I'm just going to go ahead and adhere these together, and I'm going to just place adhesive here on this portion. While these two pieces are adhered together and drying, I'm going to be adding this front little bumper portion. So it is a curved side and then it has the little tab that you can adhere here to right underneath this front portion here using that tab. And it's going to fold out. You want to make sure that it's stuck really nicely first. So just be aware if it's glitter paper, be careful that it doesn't tear as you're trying to hold it there. Okay, and there's that front little portion. It adds a little something. So now as that's drying, of course, we can start decorating this little truck. So I want to put some Christmas garland on mine. And the way that I'm going to do that is by adding these pieces to the side. You can decide if you want it higher or lower. I don't want to cover too much of that wooden portion. So I'm just going to add it a little bit lower. And just be careful with the little lights because they do extend past the edge of that little truck. 
So you may want to do this before you adhere the bed to the front of the truck. It's up to you. Okay, once those are adhered there, you can add a third swag if you'd like to. You can add one to the back, which I think I'll do. There are Christmas lights that you can cut out using this die set, and they are absolutely adorable. So take advantage of those. So I've cut them out of three different colors. I cut off some of the little bulbs, add, added them to different strings, the whole nine yards, because why not? I'm going to just center these. And don't worry, that adhesive does dry clear. Okay, here I have the option, of course, of decorating this further. I can add little candy canes. I can add some holly and berries or some little gifts. I did cut some of these out. And I use three different colors, and you can interchange them as you like. And, of course, there are the little bells that are included in the kit. And there you can see them a little better. I use the white glitter card, or the iridescent, and then the green and the red mirror card. And, of course, the idea is that you can then either fill this with little candies or put a small gift inside and don't forget that the little candy canes are directional so it's up to you how you place them on your project but you have mirror images which i think is fantastic and okay then of course don't forget that you have little wheels that you can add now to your truck and these don't have to be as low as the other ones it's up to you how far up you place these you just of course want to match the front to the back and then you want to make sure that there are two on the back cabin and one in the front i did decide to go ahead and add the little wreath to the front of my truck i supplemented it with a little bow that i had in my stash from a previous release from tonic studios from last year i also did add golden star nouveau pure sheen little sequins so i just added adhesive and then grouped them along the little wreath so i'm going to just stick that right in the front to give that little truck a festive look super cute and i'm going to set this aside for a moment i did want to add the little bows to the front of my train here i had debated on what to add here and i just decided you know what these bows are just too beautiful to pass up <laughs> so i am going to add these here and by the way all of the papers are from tonic studios as well as the nouveau drops the only thing that i didn't use from tonic were the little diamond dots that I added as the little eyes for the bears because I just couldn't resist using that. Um, one more thing you may want to add is this piece here. As you can see I've cut mine out twice and for your project you're going to want to gauge how many you need depending on how many cars you've made, how long your train is, but you can adhere these back to back if you'd like. I've just gone ahead and cut them out of the leftover pieces from my little windows. So that came in handy. And then I did apply red line adhesive to the bottom half portion there. And then I'm just going to supplement that with a little drop of Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive. And this can go on the bottom of your little train right centered as best as you can there. You can adhere them to each one and then you have the opportunity to tie that together. I'm just using some twine from Tonic Studios and it comes in quite handy. You can just go ahead and cut off a little piece.
to then tie these together. So I'm just going to lay them on their side. And you may want to use your tweezers, whatever is easiest for you. Just feed it through both. And then, of course, you can overlap them if you want to. But here, you just go ahead and tie it. And if you can make a bow, you can. And if not, then a little knot is sufficient. And the idea, of course, is that then you can tie these together to make your little train. And of course, as I had shown you before, you can also use it to create the closure to your little box, depending on how you decide to make that. But that completes this tutorial. I do hope that you have enjoyed it. This has been a lot of fun to make. I love how playful and adorable this die set is, but of course, just like all of the other Tonic Studios dies, I really love that they include so many pieces that are versatile that you can use for card making or for making entirely different projects. So take a look at the pieces. You have a lot of little squares, rectangles, circles that you can use on their own. Just the little bears, for instance, you could use for a baby card. The same goes for the strips that are included. You could use these just on their own to create a little gift box and then add a little bow in the, uh, in the center or on top and then you're good to go. So if you need a really quick gift idea, you can definitely just make one of these little boxes and then adorn it with the little bows included or any of the other little items that you might like and add the little sentiment like the Merry Christmas and you're good to go. So if you're going to pick up a set, I would say this is just too, too cute to pass up. And of course, if you need a masculine gift, then by all means, you could create the little pickup truck as I have here. And that's what came to mind. I do hope that you leave me some feedback. Don't forget that the affil affiliate links are down in the description bar of my video so if you want to click down below you'll be able to find that right away and that way you can go shopping enjoy the goodies that you have picked up during this wonderful week and as i always say i hope that you can be inspired and be blessed and i thank you so much for watching